guys, this has been a really exciting experience working with a new drum company. Like I said in my other video, uh, which thank you so much for supporting, it was just time to move on. And when you say move on, it's like, what do you mean by that? W moving on, in my case, is super serious for me because this is what I do for a living. And I have to have a group of people that I trust and gear that is reliable and consistent. So far, the Yamaha is both of those things. So let me explain what I mean by consistent. In a touring situation, even in a headlining scenario, there's a lot of times where you just don't have much time to get a sound check. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But even in, in the best scenario, you can't take all day making your stuff work. You just need something that tunes up and works really well. Now, a lot of it has to do with head combination and the way you tune and that kind of stuff. But in the case of Yamaha with these live hybrid oak, I think they are perfect live drums. What they are is a seven ply oak, and in the middle there is a phenolic layer. And that phenolic layer creates a level of consistency that I don't think I've ever seen in a drum kit other than a synthetic drum kit. Synthetics are fine, and when I talk about that, I mean, you know, whether it's fiberglass or whether it's carbon fiber, Vista lights or whatever. This is wood, you can hear the wood, you know it's oak when you hit it. It's got that nice, deep, round tone, but it is powerful. Uh, it really, it's a really punchy shell. But it's not like so aggressive that, uh, that, that the microphone hates it, you know? When I get up and I have to do a sound check, the worst thing I hear is when, you know, my 14 inch tom, let's say, is grumbling a little bit and you try to tune it a little bit and it doesn't go into tune. And now you're, you know, the sound guy screaming for you to muffle it, or he's going to gate it, or whatever. It just turns into a thing because he's got two, three, four, five vocals to set up, keyboard, bass, guitar, maybe another guitar, whatever. They got to get moving. They can't spend all day on your 14-inch floor tom, right? You got to have consistent gear, okay? It's great to have gear that you can geek out on and go, oh, this has so much personality and da 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 And then you get it up on a stage and the climate's changed and the tuning just goes to hell and now you're stuck with a drum that you have to just slave to get to, to go into tune. They really tune up very easily, you'll hear it. I've messed around so far with the Focus X by Aquarian and also on the 14 and 16 inch floors, I'm using just the classic clears. I'm using the stock resonant sides for now, but I have a super kick two uh, on the kick drum and I'm using the stock resonant side on the bass drum right now. In the bass drum, I only have just a little bit of uh, acoustic foam, really. That's all I put in there so far. The bass drum has weights in it. It's insane. And does it make a difference? Yeah. It makes a huge difference. The low end is phenomenal on this kick drum. It's a 16 by 22. So let me get into the rest of the sizes. The tom sizes are 7 by 10, 18 by 12. That's the rack toms. The floor toms are 13 by 14 and 15 by 16. And like I said, the kick is 16 by 22. But the snare drum, which is a matching snare drum, is five and a half by 14. I love that size. All these drums are finished in a charcoal sunburst, and they're made a, a particular way. They're done with a process called uzu curry, or uzu for short. And it's a way that the Japanese, they sand the drum down, then they put a very dark paint or stain it goes into those crevices and then they go ahead and sand it again, all that dark black off and it leaves uh, paint inside of the wood grain and then they go over it with the color that the kit's gonna be, like red or blue or in my case, it's another charcoal sort of color, which I think just looks amazing. I, th I love the way it looks. It's very cool. It's not totally matte, it's not totally gloss. Looks great under these lights, I think. It's not too, 
it, it's a little more subdued than what I normally play. These are the dark silver absolute lugs. The thing I love about these lugs is that they are single point lugs. When I was building drums, I knew that single point lugs were a big thing because it's less holes in the drum, it's less contact, and it's only necessary contact on that drum. So Yamaha has their Yes system for their tom mounts. It does have three holes, it does put three holes in the drum, but they're not huge, uh, and they float awesome. I mean, they just, and you go, well, there's three holes in there now, but there's 10 less holes in the drum because you're using single point lugs. Most drum companies use two points, which means there's 20 holes in the drum, no matter what, even if you don't do a vent hole. So you have a seven ply oak, one of the plies being phenolic on the inside, creating a lot of consistency and single point lugs. It's and, and the hoops are, they're Dyna hoops and it's like a 2.3 millimeter steel. So it's, it's really a tacky and it holds up really well. It's stronger than your typical triple flange. The bearing edge on these drums are cut at a 45 degree and it gives you a lot of different tuning uh, choices. So let's talk about the hardware for a second. I wanted hardware that was not over-engineered and this hardware is not over-engineered, but it's not under-engineered either. It's simple, it works, I love it. Also the pedals, the FP9 pedals, I have the chain drive, it's a double pedal, it's phenomenal. I didn't think I'd ever walk away from a DW5000, but I gotta tell you, so far I love, love, love these pedals. So this kick pedal is pretty amazing. You can put weights on the beater, and I'm gonna do a more extensive review of this later, but you can change the spring action just with like a click, like on the fly, to adjust the tension. It's just amazing. The feel is great, and it's just, you can just keep adjusting it like six ways to Sunday. It's just awesome. I personally like chain drive pedals. I don't like direct drive. I've tried it, just not my thing. I think that the chain drives are a little squishier somehow and, and it just suits my style better. So what else can I tell you? I would totally put this kit on a poison stage. I do think that uh, we'll probably do something different uh, for a poison tour, a little more flashy, people are used to that, but the, the shells I would not change uh, at all. Uh, I, love, I love this configuration. A lot of people ask, and, and I'm just reading the comments and people are asking me, and I have a few more that I'm gonna go over. People ask me like, why not two kick drums? That would look great. It does look great. Two more mics, cause you usually go inside with one and outside with another. So it's two more mics, it's another case. And it, you can't, it, you're not playing it really any different. It does look great and it is pretty relaxed. And I like the way it feels and it feels a little more symmetrical and balanced. So I may do two kick drums on a Poison Tour, but I'm gonna do a sideband, which I'll be announcing pretty soon. And this is the configuration I would take. It just much simpler and I don't need to cover as much territory probably as I do on a Poison Tour. Oh, so some people have asked me about the kick drum, about the tom mount. Um, you know, I could maybe wind up at some point in time using that for something, a symbol or something, I don't know. But from what I understand, there is a cover. It's kind of like a, a Yamaha badge type of thing. And I'm probably gonna take that off and put that cover on it. But it's nice to have that. And I'm gonna throw it in my toolbox just in case at some point in time, I would wanna use it. Now, if I was just using one tom, like a 12, let's say, or a 13, I would probably mount it off the tom. Uh, the way this Yes system works, it's not gonna impede the sound of this kit at all. I I'm telling you right now. A kick drum, literally, you're taking a drum and you're laying it on its side. You're putting legs on it. You're sticking a, a, a beater on it and you're putting a pillow on it. It just defies the rest of the laws of the physics that you want from your toms, okay? 
And so it's not going to affect the kick drum, really. Uh, you, you can affect the kick drum if you really, really uh, start blowing a bunch of holes in it, correct. But in this case, it's really not, it's a very small hole. And I'd kind of rather have it than not have it. Let me see here. I had a couple questions. All right. Um, Michael Camo or Camo? I'm sorry, I hope I'm not blowing that name too bad. Anyway, he said, will you be customizing your Yamaha drums as far as paint? And the answer is probably. Probably order up shells that are unpainted and then do some work on them either, you know, with Craig Frazier or somebody and do something cool. I don't know what yet. I have a million ideas already. So it's, it's, it's gonna be a fun thing. All right, so Rick Henry asked me, and he is not a drummer, and coming from somebody who is not a drummer, he wanted to ask me, what do I look for in a drum kit? And like I said, in this scenario, in a poison touring scenario, I'm looking for consistency. I'm looking for stability. I'm looking for something I don't have to worry about every day. I know that this kit is going to work. Yamaha is one of those brands that I didn't really consider a whole lot at the beginning because I was deeply invested in DW for so long and my own stuff that I built. But I did peek around it at Rogers because I'm a Rogers collector. I have a lot of <clears throat> old Rogers kits and snare drums and stuff. So the thing, like I said, that is the most important to me is being able to just sit down at that kit and it just work. Everything just work the way it's supposed to work. I'm getting that out of this kit, without a doubt. So I hope you got something out of this video. I will be miking them up, running it through my Pro Tools rig so you can hear what it sounds like in a more recording situation. I might be doing a recording with some friends, and so that's the real test. I'm a song guy, I play rock songs. So I wanna set up and do a recording uh, with some friends, and I can't wait to show you that video. When I do it, I haven't done it yet. But that'd be cool, that's gonna be the real test. I'm gonna get that going as soon as I can. So make sure to subscribe. You can ring the bell and it'll tell you when I upload new videos. If there's any more questions, let me know and talk to you soon. Take care of each other and keep rock alive.